I'm sure you've seen lots of advice online about using Epsom salts in the garden. You might even have watched some videos on YouTube telling you how great this product is. In this video, I'm going to have a look at all of these claims and tell you the truth about using it in the garden. What is Epsom salts? The picture shows you a bag of Epsom salts. Notice the red bar in the middle of the bag. It says magnesium sulfate. That tells you exactly what's in the bag. It is a simple compound that is made up of magnesium, sulfur, and oxygen. There are no mysterious chemicals or ingredients. And chemists have understood this product for a very long time. Lots of people recommend Epsom salts as a good fertilizer. But is it really a fertilizer? By legal definition, a fertilizer contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the three nutrients plants use most. Epsom salts contains none of these. If it were sold as a bag of fertilizer, it would be a 000 fertilizer. Would you buy such a product? Well, of course not. Epsom salts is clearly not a fertilizer. It might help plants grow if your soil is deficient of either magnesium or sulfur, but most soils do not have this deficiency. If your soil is deficient of sulfur, it would be much cheaper to just go and buy agricultural sulfur and add that to the soil. If your soil is deficient of magnesium, adding Epsom salts will help. It is claimed that Epsom salts will make plants grow better. In most cases, this is simply not true. If your soil has enough magnesium and sulfur, which is probably the case, then adding more will do absolutely nothing for your plants. And it will also not make your fruit sweeter. A lot of the online sources of information say that if your leaves are yellow, you can make them green again by either spraying the leaves with Epsom salts mixed in a little bit of water or adding it to your soil. Here's a picture of a yellow leaf. Does it have a magnesium deficiency? Well, it turns out it doesn't. In fact, this plant is growing in soil that has a potassium deficiency. You can't determine which deficiency you have by looking at the color of a leaf. If you had tried to fix this yellow leaf by adding Epsom salts, you might actually make things worse for the plant. The reason is that too much magnesium can cause a deficiency of calcium or potassium. What this means is that if you add too much Epsom salts to your soil, you'll actually make the leaves go yellow. A yellow leaf only tells you that there is a problem. It cannot be used to determine which nutrient is deficient. Only a soil test done by a proper lab can tell you that. Blossom end rot occurs mostly in tomatoes and peppers, but can also affect cucumbers. It results in a hard, corky, black material forming at the end of the fruit. A vegetable that has this problem can still be eaten. Just cut off the affected areas. Lots of online suggestions will tell you that the way to cure blossom end rot is to add Epsom salts to the soil. This is just nonsense. For years, it was thought that blossom end rot was due to a calcium deficiency. So how can adding magnesium solve a calcium deficiency? Simply can't. The latest science says that it is not even a calcium deficiency. Blossom end rot is caused by irregular watering, either by the gardener or by Mother Nature. People who grow roses come up with all kinds of myths about taking care of their plants. Epsom salts is one of their favorite soil additives. It should be added at planting time and it should be added yearly as part of the regular fertilizing routine. But none of this is necessary. The American Rose Society a group that knows a thing or two about growing roses does not recommend the use of Epsom salts for the casual gardener. It's simply not needed. Epsom salt is also suggested for getting rid of all kinds of pests and diseases. But none of these recommendations work. All living organisms, including you and me, need magnesium as a nutrient. 
and it is not very toxic to any of us. Here's an odd recommendation. Apparently adding Epsom salts to holes drilled in tree stumps speeds up the decay of the wood, but even this is a myth. I've shown you that Epsom salts has almost no use in the garden. The exception would be a magnesium deficiency. But you might ask, what is the harm in using it, just in case you do have this deficiency? The problem with using products you don't need is that they harm the environment. The material needs to be mined, packaged, and shipped. This all uses energy resources and produces chemical wastes. And then you dump it on the soil where rain will wash it into the rivers and oceans. Please stop using Epsom salts in the garden. You simply don't need it. Well, what can you do with Epsom salts? Well, you can bathe in it. But I have more bad news for you. It does not even do anything for you in the bath. Our skin can't absorb magnesium, so Epsom salts will not keep your skin soft. But if you enjoy bathing in it, go ahead and have a bath on me. If you enjoyed this video, you'll also like my book called Garden Myths. In it I look at common gardening advice and try and determine if it's really true. I cover such topics as, does beer really kill slugs? Can you use vinegar to get rid of weeds? And will citronella plant keep mosquitoes away? If you're interested in this book, the best place to get it is Amazon.